Engineers tend to deal with lots of numbers. For example, during tests of the space shuttle main engines, chamber pressure was typically measured at intervals of 0.02 seconds. During a 500 second test, this amounts to almost 25,000 data points. And chamber pressure was only one of dozens of measurements that were being made. When analyzing the test data, it obviously wasn't feasible to assign a different variable name to each of these values. It was much easier to group the chamber pressure data points as a single variable, which contained 25,000 numbers. That's the general idea behind arrays. One variable contains lots of numbers, which form a logical grouping. An array is a single variable which contains a bunch of related numbers. These numbers can then be used as a group or individual numbers can be extracted from the array as needed. For example, this array, A, contains nine numbers organized in three rows and three columns. The array X has a single row containing three numbers. This array, Y, also contains three numbers organized in a single column. Individual numbers in the arrays are typically specified by the row and the column in which they can be found. Mathematically, the row and column numbers are indicated as subscripts separated by commas following the variable name. For example, the element of A in the second row and the third column, this element, is 3. This would be expressed as A of 2, comma, 3, second row, third column, and that is the number 3. Elements in one-dimensional arrays are generally referred to with only one subscript. So x sub 2 will be the second element in x, which is the number 2. y sub 3 will be the third element in y, which is negative 6. Creating arrays can be done in a variety of ways. The first approach I'll present is to create the array by individually specifying every element in the array. To specify that the values being typed are going to be in an array, enclose the values in square brackets. By default, the first value you specify will be in the first row and first column of the array. Subsequent to this, successive columns are separated by spaces or commas. Successive rows are separated either by semicolons or the Enter key on your keyboard. All variables that you create must be assigned a name. The variable name is placed to the left of an assignment operator, an equal sign, and the values in the array are placed to the right. For example, consider this array B shown here. To create this array, type the variable name, b, an assignment operator, and then the values in the array. An open square bracket tells Octave that an array is being created. Then type the elements in the first row, 1, 2, separated by either spaces or commas. To move to the second row, enter a semicolon. Then type the elements in the second row, separated by spaces. Another semicolon takes me to the third row and I type the elements in that row. To show that I'm done creating the array, I close the square brackets and press Enter. Now let's see array creation in action. First, I'll define a two-dimensional matrix named A. So A equals an open square bracket 1, space, 2, space, 3, a semicolon to move to the next row, 2, comma, 5, space, 6, a semicolon to move to the final row, 7, comma, 8, comma, 9. Close square brackets. Notice that I can use either spaces or commas to separate columns. Now I'll create a row vector by defining b equals open square bracket 1 space 3 space 2 space 6 space 7 close square brackets finally i'll create a column vector c equals open square bracket 4 semicolon to move to the next row 5 semicolon 6 semicolon 8, close square brackets. 
course, if you prefer, you can use the inner key to separate rows. Now type D equals, open square brackets, 0, space, 1, space, 0. I'll use an inner key now to move to the next row, 2, space, 1, space, 3. Now, in this case, Octave doesn't execute any commands as a result of pressing the inner key. Since I haven't closed the square brackets yet, and Octave knows that I'm not done defining an array. Scalars can be defined as an array containing a single number. Type x equals, open square bracket, 4, close square bracket. Scalars are simply a special case of an array. However, if we define a scalar, the square brackets are optional. For example, typing y equals 7 works perfectly well. Now let's take a look at the contents of the workspace with the who s command. If you need to redo a command, a simple way to do that is to press the up arrow on your keyboard. The command prompt will cycle back through the previous commands you've executed. You can pick the one you want, edit it, and re-execute it. You can also define specific elements of an array by referencing the array element by its indices. In typical mathematical array notation, the elements in an array are specified by the row and column numbers in that order of the element. This row-column combination gives the indices of the element. The only difference between the mathematical notation and octaves notation is that in octave, the row and column numbers are placed in parentheses after the array name instead of using subscripts. The row and column numbers must be separated by a comma. Numbering of rows and columns always starts with 1. Elements of one-dimensional arrays can be addressed by a single number. If the array has a single column, use the row number. If the array has a single row, use the column number. For example, suppose that this array exists in the workspace. I want to assign values to specific locations in the array. For example, let's replace the number 4 with the number 7. That number is in the second row and the second column of the array. The syntax to do that is to assign 7 to the element of B that's in the second row and the second column. Now that value is set to 7. None of the other elements are affected. To see what happens when we assign a value to an array location that doesn't exist, I'll assign the number 9 to the element of B that's in the third row and the third column of that array. B doesn't have three columns, so Octave creates that location and places a 9 there. Octave then fills in the unspecified elements here and here with zeros. Now I'll show some more examples of defining or creating specific elements of an array. Now I'll create a couple of vectors. So x equals open square bracket 1 space 2 space 3 space 4 close square bracket. And a column vector y equals square bracket negative 3 semicolon negative 2 semicolon negative 1 semicolon zero, and close the square bracket. The third element of y can be retrieved by typing y of 3. I can change the second element of x by typing x of 2 equals, for example, 5. Notice that the elements of a one-dimensional array can be defined with a single index. It isn't necessary for us to keep track of whether the array is a row or a column. However, you can use two indexes if you prefer. For example, I can redefine the second element of x with the command x of 1, 2 equals negative 6. That's the element in the first row and the second column. An element can be added to y by typing y of 3, comma, 4 equals 7. Octave increases the size of the array as necessary, puts a 7 in the correct location, and assigns any undefined locations to be 0. Matrix creation can be streamlined if there is a pattern to the elements being created.
The approach uses colons to specify values. The general syntax is that we specify a starting value, an increment between values, and an ending value, or more accurately, a value that won't be exceeded. When the array is created, its first element is set equal to start underscore val. Subsequent elements in the array are created by adding the value specified by the increment to the previous element in the array. Octave ends creation of the array when the next value exceeds the value specified by end underscore val. This syntax specifies a starting value of 0.2, an increment of 0.3, and a final value of 0.9. The array will start with the value 0.2. The next value will be 0.2 plus the increment 0.3, which gives 0.5. The next value is 0.5 plus 0.3, which is 0.8. The next value created would be 0.8 plus 0.3, which is 1.1. But this is larger than the ending value, so Octave stops creating the array. In this example, the array is assigned to a variable named x, so the variable x contains the values 0.2, 0.5, and 0.8. By default, Octave creates row vectors. Now let's use Octave to create some much larger arrays. For starters, I'll create a fairly large vector, starting at 0, ending at 10, and having increments of 0.1. There are 101 points in the vector, and they scroll by pretty fast. Watching them do that isn't really very productive, but we can keep the results from being displayed on the screen if we choose. Just terminate the command with a semicolon and display the output of the command as suppressed. Let's create another large array by typing big array equals 0 colon 0 0.01 colon 100 followed by a semicolon and then press enter. The variable big array is created, and it is in our workspace for later use, but we don't need to look at the number. There are a variety of functions which create arrays. I'll give a relatively short list here with very few details as to how they're used. If you know the function name, it's easy to find the appropriate syntax and how the command works using Octave's help files. The linspace command creates an array of uniformly spaced values. That just means that the increment between values is a constant. The logspace command creates an array of logarithmically spaced values. So the increment between values changes logarithmically. The zeros command creates an array of zeros. And the ones command creates an array of ones. The EYE command creates an identity matrix that has ones on the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. RAND and RANDN create arrays of random numbers. And if you have any questions about how to use these, check Octave's help files. Arrays can be created to incorporate other arrays. You can use any combination of the array creation approaches I've given previously, as long as the dimensions of the arrays involved are consistent. Remember that commas or spaces are used to separate columns when defining an array element by element. Suppose I define an array A to be this and an array B to be this. Now I'll define another array C in which the A and B arrays are separated by a space. The space, as usual, implies that the first and second sets of numbers form two sets of columns. Therefore, the resulting array is this. Alternately, you can create an array D in which the A and B arrays are separated by a semicolon. The semicolon is used to separate rows. So the array A forms the first set of rows of the D array, and B forms the second set of rows of the D array. The resulting array is this. It has two columns and four rows. The process of combining arrays in this way is called concatenation. The command cat can be used to concatenate arrays. For details, see the help files. Now I'll do a couple of examples that use both the built-in functions and concatenation. First, I'll create an array with two rows and three columns by typing a equals open square bracket 
0 space 1 space 2, a semicolon to move to the next row, 3 space 4 space 5, and close the square brackets. Now I'll use the ones command to create an array of ones with two rows and two columns by typing c equals ones of two comma two, where the first argument is the number of rows and the second argument is the number of columns. I'll also create array, an array of zeros with two rows and three columns by typing d equals zeros of 2 comma 3. I can concatenate the array of 1's as additional columns to the A array by typing open square bracket A comma C close square bracket. The comma implies that the columns of A are added as an additional columns to the array C. I can also add the zeros of the D array as additional columns to the A array by typing open square bracket A space D, since a space can also be used to separate columns. It's also legitimate to add the zeros of the D array as additional rows of the array A by typing open square bracket A semicolon D. A semicolon, of course, implies that the next entries will be all in subsequent rows. Finally, it's important to realize that the sizes of the arrays you're trying to concatenate have to be consistent. I could add the array D as additional columns to the array A because they both have the same number of rows. Likewise, I could add the array D as additional rows of the array A because they have the same number of columns. C could be appended as additional columns to A because they both have the same number of rows. However, I can't add C as additional rows to A because they don't have the same number of columns. To illustrate this, type open square bracket A semicolon C close square bracket. I get an error message. This is our first glimpse into the importance of keeping track of the sizes of our arrays. In order to work effectively with arrays, it's really important to know the number of rows and columns that are in all of your arrays. One command that can help you do this is the size command. The size command returns the number of rows and columns in an array in that order. For example, if I type size of A, my answer is an array with the numbers 2 and 3 in it. The output argument is an array containing two values. The first value is the number of rows in the argument array, and the second value is the number of columns in the array. So size of C returns 2, 2. C has two rows and two columns. Now that we understand the basic structure and creation of arrays, I'll talk more about accessing specific elements of arrays.